Join us as we talk about the Paradise House, a historic home in Old Town Pocatello, where Pocatello Paranormal Research did an investigation the first part of November. This is Colleen with Speaking of Spirits, and we are going to talk a little bit about, we had an investigation last night at the Paradise House in Pocatello, and um, we had some great things happen to us. It's a very active location. So, um, oh, I forgot to introduce everybody, <laughs> Gina and Susie and Kate. And um, Kate wanted it. She wasn't at the investigation with us, so she kind of wanted to pick our brain a little bit about it. I have so yeah, let's go for it. So, first of all, if I understood this correctly, Colleen, you usually take in the calls and filter out, is this a place we go to? Yeah. Right? So, tell me about that. How did you get the call? What were they saying? Well, yeah. So, probably for every 20 calls, I might be interested in one location. And and it's not... I do pick and choose because... I, um automatically if there are children involved we go we try to go yeah. sometimes they don't follow through with us and that's not our fault we'll do everything we can right. and then they put the skids on it and that's fine for whatever their reasoning is um i think sometimes people think that if we go in it's going to make the house more active and that's not the case we always try to quiet things down when we leave and try to stay on top of that scenario with them but so this came in, we, I was emailed by um, someone, and I'm not going to give his name out, but I, I was emailed by somebody who's um, in charge of the property right now, um, and he told me a little bit about it, and then I knew that Tim on our team had grown up right next to it. So I immediately sent Tim the picture, and I said, Tim, do you know this house? What do you think? And he goes, oh, yeah. And he's like, that because he told me all about it already. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are we going to get in? I was pretty excited. So um, I told him that we were, were going to get into the house. So he was like, he was stoked. And, and I said, don't tell me anything that went on there because I don't want to know. I um, Usually I handle the calls and I know the information and I try not to tell the team the information. These gals and Mark... Um, they, before we even drive up, they're like, they get things pegged, but, um, they may not know some of the nuances in the facility that I'll know. And I try not to tell them because I want them to not be swayed right. one way or the other by stuff. Like they may know something happens, but they don't know specifically where, and where the homeowner may have taught, told me that. But so, uh, we decided instead of setting up and it's weird cause we have, so much gear, but we've been having problems with our hard drives. And so we decided to go light on this one and I, I enjoyed it a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's awesome. So Gina, when you pulled up to the house, what did you feel? Well, it was funny. I actually had drove in that area because we didn't have an address. I just knew it was located. Am I able to say where it's located approximately? Yeah. It was located near the Sandrod house, which is very famous in Pocatello. So after I picked my granddaughters up from Head Start, which is right over in that neighborhood, I went and I drove by. And the only thing we'd been told was that it was next to. Well, there is a house next to. But I drove down and I'm like, ah, I think it's that. I think it's the one. So I actually messaged her. I said, is it the house next to the Stanrod or the one directly across the street? 
It was the one directly across the street. And that was what I felt it. I just, I guess I felt chaotic energy mm -hmm. would be the number one thing that I would say. It definitely felt active and chaotic to me. Susie, when you walked in, what did you feel? Well, I started um, with the picture that Colleen originally sent us because um, I was drawn to the upper left window immediately. And I got the little pictures in my head of an older gentleman, you know, with the top hat and a high black collar and mustache and stuff walking out to his horseless carriage and very much pride in that going back and forth, you know, where it was supposed to be. And then I just did feel that there was a lot of chaotic type energy with it. Um, and it was busy. So I was excited. I didn't drive by because I was like, I'm going to wait. <laughs> I guess well, I'm not from Pocatello. I knew I, I was coming where it was. after it started um, because I had to be later. But um, I just wanted to make sure I didn't pull up to the mm -hmm. wrong house in the dark. Or, right. You know, because you don't always necessarily park right out. Right in house. front. Yeah. 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 And when I first walked in, um, we were talking to uh, the gentleman and just kind of going through rooms. And I was immediately drawn to two pieces of furniture in one particular room. And um, that was really interesting because we could kind of see it moving slightly. I don't know if you want yeah, me to okay. say everything. Go ahead because so, we live streamed it. So. Okay. So in the back room, there was a rocking chair and it was just moving ever so slightly. And I was very, very drawn to that. Whether it was any part of the original owners or because they collected antiques or if it had the energy of the previous owner that didn't live there. And then there was also a child's stool in the dining room that was a little creepy. And then, um, so that's where I started off with that I didn't like the stool and that somebody was hanging out in that chair. So, so you said you went in with light gear. What was your process or what was the method that you guys chose? Um, yeah, so normally we have several hard drives with like home security systems. And unfortunately, ever since we did the Yellowstone Hotel, we've had nothing but problems with our hard drives. Mm -hmm. It on the we so when you have a, a security system like in a convenience store or anything like that, you can go in and you can review things and it's still recording, right? And we had through that investigation reviewed stuff. It was, it was recording just fine. Three different systems in that place because it's so big. And so we knew it was all recording. It was fine. When we walked out the door the next morning, I'm all excited because I have the day off. I'm like, I'm going to download all the hard drives and get them to the team. It had factory reset every hard drive. Every single one. Now, the data may still be there. And I called a data recovery company and they said it was like a minimum $500 to pull it. And I'm Ooh. like, I can't do that. We yeah. don't charge anything for our investigations. I'm not yeah. going to spend fifteen hundred dollars right. to recover the data yeah. but it, yeah so well then is there a guarantee that there no, would even have there's been not a guarantee That's it's the just thing. their time so yeah we have had those hard drives on a few investigations since then and we've had nothing but problems with them mm -hmm. um we went to gate city coffee and we had problems with them there we had so i'm like i'm not i don't know what to do with them they do appear like they're working fine and i can but every time we're on an investigation now, we can't trust them. So now I'm like, we're using these and we live stream or we're recording. And um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I've spent a lot of money on these systems and I can't use them now. Um, so we went in with just our handheld gear. I told everybody, have your cell phones charged before or, or like a handheld video cam. Um, have your cell phones charged before we walk in the door. Everybody's responsible for filming and voice recording. Bring your voice recorders, uh, whatever, like that, mm. handheld gear. But we're not setting up our cameras because I can't just I can't trust the hard drives now. Um, so that's what we did. We went in and we did a little bit of a walkthrough, and then we started investigating. So, what was your experience in the house? It was a, it was a torn thing between two things. I have severe allergies, so I was kind of struggling because it had been flooded. So I had some mold issues. There were, you know, that kind of thing going on. But Susie and I, like, pinpointed, like, almost the exact same time, some things we were completely able to validate. And um, 
it was neat. I had a piece of jewelry in this huge, like the big cabinet door kind of jewelry boxes that either hang or stand and you can put, what, 20, 50? There yeah. was at least 50 necklaces on there. Um, one moving. None of the others moving. So it wasn't like it got bumped because if you bump it, there would oh, be multiple goodness. pieces, at least a few pieces moving. Um, saw some very strange things. It was funny. I love dolls. <laughs> no one else on the team. Yeah, I know. I had some other friends today on my post. They're like, burn them. Just take them out of the yard and burn them. I'm like, I love dolls. So there were some really cool dolls picking up that I, I don't know if I have rose colored glasses when it comes to the dolls, but I love the dolls. Uh, the other part that was a little challenging was the chaotic clutter. Oh, it was very, there clutter. was a lot of clutter and it was kind of dirty. Yeah, and it was very dirty. Lots of smells yep. that kind of, between your physical self trying to not be bothered by it versus the spiritual, you know, psychic, those kind of things, trying to tap we into it. We were getting both kind of smells mm -hmm. is what she was talking about. Like, yeah. like all three of us were in the master bedroom and all three of us it, at different times were smelling the same thing. We were smelling feces. We were smelling sick, like a cancer type of illness, like decay and rot. Um, just in the it basic same area, bad. but I had to different leave. times. I finally yeah. had to leave the room. I'm like, I mm -hmm. can't. I, well, it was so overwhelming to me. I had to leave the room. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it was bad. So I, uh, yeah, and that's nothing on, you know, no. we don't, we don't know what the situation was with, right. with the people that lived there. It just was, um. It was overwhelming. Some of it was overwhelming. It just is what it is because her experience was happening and ours wasn't at the same time. But then when she went, she could feel it. And then I went and it was the same thing. But like and it was in the same general area and mine didn't. I was like, oh, I don't smell anything really. And then I started touching items, personal mm -hmm. items. And then it just like a wave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've gotten to see you use dowsing cuts. I think I saw that you were using them, too, at this location. Mm -hmm. What did you find with that? <laughs> yeah, so we decided to sit in the sunroom, which is a beautiful room, on the west uh, south side of the house. And as soon as I sat down, I could... Um, we had a few energies come in and step in front, but then... But then... Um, there was somebody, it was a guest who was working with us, who was a contractor who stayed in the house for a while while they're trying to renovate it. Um, there was some flood damage, so they were trying, they're trying to work on it. And, um, I had the sense that there was a, a young, young girl that walked into the room and I looked at you and I'm like, it's like young, like in teenager mm -hmm. young. She's like, yeah. And I said, yeah. And then I like, I looked at the guest and I said, with her color hair and she had real red hair and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. And it was funny she wore it up that night. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, she did. And so, and then I started talking with her on the dowsing rods. And as I'm talking with her on the dowsing rods, you, I think you looked up. I said, she's, I asked, I said, Ed, are you from the Stanrod house? And immediately her rods just crossed. Yeah, so like, you looked oh, up okay. her information and, and found out that it was M Pammy. Pammy. Stanrod, mm -hmm. and who died at eight, uh, 16. 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Early 16. So she apparently just like, whoo, somebody wants to talk and came mm -hmm. into the house and chatted with us for a little while. And then she was gone. She, so every question, like we would find, um, I found her name and I just waited and I said, is your name Cammy? And immediately her rods yeah. would cross. And this strange thing, I was picking up on a strong M, mm -hmm. but I'm like, it doesn't seem like it's like Mary or Martha, but mm -hmm. I'm picking up on a very strong M, mm -hmm. and it was Cammy. Cammy. Two yeah. M's. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting how that kind of stuff works out on investigations. A lot of times we're validated on the, on the investigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the staircase was very <laughs> cool. Yeah, so the staircase kind of goes up, has a little landing, goes up a couple stairs, and then goes up to the top. So there was this kind of pillar thing with a decorative something on it. And we're getting, we get to that point, and I was the first one, and I turn, and I'm like, and I take the other couple steps. She gets to that spot, and she's like, 
<sighs> and it's like, and we both look at each yeah, other like, and I'm like, up I'm having, <laughs> yeah, I'm having some chest things. Uh-huh. And we went, went up six stairs, maybe yep. at that point. So it wasn't like we just hiked up to the top of the Empire State Building and then find out that that was a spot where one of the people that had lived there had passed. Mm-hmm. That, you know, and mm-hmm. we were like, we did the high five and the yep, we're like, like, yep. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I, I didn't have the chest stuff, but what I felt was like my legs were like elephant legs i just so heavy it was all i could do the first time well getting up those stairs all heart I could failure, do. Yep. you get that well Your that in the fact that elderly, i was paralyzed so my legs are always funky anyways but man the first time up that staircase and it didn't happen mm-hmm. the next few times but that first time was like wow they felt like they were 500 pounds i think feet. she was pulling in on her too probably mm-hmm. So it was, it was nuts. But anyway, we, and then, um, we get up, we had the bedroom that you keyed in on. We went up mm-hmm. there first and man, our equipment was going nuts. Was and up. yeah, so it, um, you know, Andy thought it was maybe something to do with the old knob and two wiring, but the equipment would also turn off. Yeah. So if it's not, if it's, if you have some t- like a fear cage effect, you're going to have, um, your equipment's going to hit. Every, yeah, consistent, uh, consistently consistent. everywhere in the room. That didn't happen. It was going on and off. It was responsive to our questions. I remember when I asked, um, can you turn it off? And, and it yeah. shut it off. And then I asked the question and it lit it, it back lit up, up again. again. So, yeah, there were several times mm-hmm. that it was absolute immediate response. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, it seemed like they is super excited to talk. And that's why it was just like, well, we calm down. <laughs> We're here. Just take your time mm-hmm. and, you know, respond to us because it was just so rapid. But. And then we had a lot of equipment initially when we walked down into the basement. Mm-hmm. Our equipment went off. We set it on the table. It started going off. And then, like, the, the man, I think, that was down there didn't want to talk to us. Mm-hmm. Same thing. We go out into the garage. The workshop goes nuts. And then, on quiet. the equipment went quiet i think we chased him around the house i don't think he necessarily wanted us to be there but i think towards the end of the investigation because i took her into the rocking chair room at the very last because we had avoided that room the whole time because that's the first room we went into mm-hmm. as soon as we went into it again um there was an overwhelming smell of like there was cigar smoke. There was old man cologne. It was like a wall. And then both her and I like took turns sitting in it. We both just felt very stoic. Yeah, like all of a sudden. Oh. Yeah. And like, we don't have to talk to you. We don't have to answer your questions. Just yeah. very stoic. Yeah. Yeah. And I was I mean, like, that's the sense of the man that I was getting the whole time, you know, just like. You know, we don't do any research on a property before we walk in the door. We just don't. Some of us happen to know some information like Tim did, but he didn't tell us until these ladies had the chest, the breathing issues. And he went, oh, yeah, by the way, when I lived across the street, a lady was found dead at the bottom of the stairs from a heart attack. So he held that information because mm-hmm. he knows better than to try, try to, you know, key us in on Well, because it can sublim- it, it subliminally can. plant seeds. It can. Yeah. So he waited and then they said something. He goes, oh, yeah, by the way. So Tim, is, you know, he was very good about that. We mm-hmm. try not to do, if I feel the call, sometimes Andy feels the calls, but we try not to take any of the information and give it on. Mm-hmm. I don't purposely look up the history of something until after the investigation. Now, because of this facility or this building, this so well-known house, it's a very well-known house that I will go to the historic society. And we had a couple of names that came up. Yeah. He also, um, was it the caretaker or realtor? The gentleman. The gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he, he was talking about like the older original guy, the, the layer of energy that I was getting over the original owner was a mercantile owner Mm -hmm. and that's why that really resonated with me with the wealth and the status and you know the way way he was dressed and the way he was dressed like it was it was about the era the 1925 era yeah so um so a lot of times guessing when you guys go in you don't just assume there's activity and you try and dispel it right was there anything that you guys were able to like maybe thought was something paranormal and you were like, ah, uh, no. Or did you guys take into consideration like the mold in the house from the flooding, like how that affects people? How was your guys' process on that for this investigation? Well, definitely when the refrigerator kicked on, that was refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we, we try to go in 
it, or at least the team goes in. I, I, I hear what somebody tells me, but I try to go in there with a clean slate. Mm -hmm. It will affect sometimes if we're using our hard drives and static cameras where we're mm -hmm. going to put things because if somebody says they're seeing activity at the end of the hall, I need a camera. So if I set up a camera, then the team already knows there must be something going on. But they may not know. They're not going to know exactly. But we try to go in and not necessarily discredit anything anybody's saying, but go in with kind of a blank slate and see what we get. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I, there's a whole lot of people out there who are, have a lot of gifts, and they, they have no idea they have a lot of gifts. Mm -hmm. And so they just they just think they're crazy or they want us to come in and, and maybe so their husbands or wives don't think they're crazy. So they ask us to come in. Yeah. One of the things was one of the doors opening mm -hmm. and she went over and it just had a harder time latching. She like, yeah, three to, times to push the bottom of it with my foot at the very bottom. And then it would finally latch. So yeah. Cause we know, looked at it completely... and they're talking, we turn around and the door goes. Yeah. Hey. That was just slightly like, like, nah, that's not paranormal. <laughs> yeah. Cause I just don't want to shut a door properly. Yeah. Is there anything about the experience that you guys want to share that you have right there? I do. Okay, one thing, okay. just really quick. I just want whoever is interested in the house to know that it's nothing is bad there. Right. Nothing is creepy there. The energy that, like, I don't know, you know, Gina and I were talking about it. Like, the energy of that home, it just wants to be loved. It misses the care and the attention that it got, and it just wants to be loved. It's not going to be anything negative for anyone no. if they get it. I think that's what we're doing from investigation. Yeah. It's really negative, so yeah. I'm sure that's reassuring. Well, welcome to Pocatello. Yeah. I would say 60% of areas have some activity. Yeah. That's just part of our for area. Sure. But one of the – I don't know if it's cool. I'm weird. But – um. A little bottle of hair. Oh, God, that was creepy. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was the only one, I think, that noticed it. Yeah. And I didn't I, even know. Well, I was just so overwhelmed with yeah, that. Yeah, it was, it was the, the stinky room, room the that stinky we all room. picked up on really pungent smells that other people standing right next to us did not they didn't smell. smell. So, I'm like, I gotta um, leave. I'm the, I'm like, I'm yeah, leave. She was, like, getting green. Yeah, she was, like, like literally getting, physically right. changing. But where the bed sat, there was a wall. And then there was a door to a bathroom and a wall. And that was where the jewelry was swinging, was right there. So I'm standing there and there's this weird picture. I don't, I don't, I didn't look that close at the picture because as I looked at the picture, I noticed the bottle. But it's like squiggly lines. And I don't know if it was stitched or if it was painted. But in the picture frame was just squiggly lines. It was like green and gold. It was weird. But there was a little, about one inch bottle with white hair. I don't know if it was no, some hair. I think it was hair. It looked like hair yeah. to me, but it, yeah. it could have been somebody's grandmother or something and they yeah. wanted to keep it. And that's fine. But mm -hmm. I think that combined with everything going on in that room, I was like, Oh God, I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it had like the curly ribbon, mm -hmm. pink curly ribbon mm -hmm. around the top of the bottle and, and like tied and it hung over that picture of the squiggles and she's like do you think it could be a child and i said well most children don't have longer white. hair that's white white and i yeah. said i couldn't i took the picture because i wanted to go home and look closer i didn't want to touch it and mess with it i mean i kind of looked a little bit at it but that was strange that was I'm really strange towards pet hair for sure no, it was human hair really oh it was human hair it was human it was definitely okay. did you see my enlarged picture no i didn't yeah so I do know it was oh, pretty yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah, because it's hairs. It's not yeah, fur. It's hair. It's hair. So fur. when we when I was in there and I don't nobody answered me, but I, I had a feeling mm -hmm. of like a generational, like a mother taking care of a daughter or I mean, you know, a daughter taking care of a mother thing. Like a two generational thing. And maybe maybe that was yeah, a piece of I'm, grandma's that's what I'm thinking. Grandma's hair. Because I'm a weirdo and I have several people's hair. Well, yeah. yeah. That it so was maybe, just combined with yeah. everything else yeah. going on in that house. That, that kind of creeped me out a little bit. But um, <laughs> there's a doll in the basement of a... He looked like a marionette. He was the only doll in my life that has never freaked me out. I liked that doll. He was very cool. I liked him. He was very cool. But um, there was... So I just want to address chaos. So... We have gone and we've done investigations at a lot of homes where there's hoarding situations. 
Mm-hmm. And this was one. Yeah. The quarters, now, in the basement, there was over 40 of those, what they call action packers. They're the enormous, like, Costco tubs with the yellow lids. They're huge. That mm-hmm. contents of the house is being put in, cataloged and put in inventory to go to an auction facility, right? It didn't make a dent in this house. No. Didn't make a dent. I and didn't that, know that was bit. what was in it. You would, That's, I wouldn't have thought it had no, been touched. Uh-huh. No, you would not have thought this house had been touched. And that, like, they have worked so hard to catalog everything. They haven't touched anything, really. Beautiful antiques, like well, you fell in love are, with some windows, oh, but my gosh, leaded glass and everything. The old silver backed mirrors and beveled edges. And, beautiful. Everything is beautiful. But, um, so chaos creates a toll on you mentally, spiritually. And hoarding situations, I don't care what it is. I don't care what kind of hoarding it is. And this was a very exquisite hoarding. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like as in... Yeah, it was an empty pizza boxes and... No, 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 no. Boxes. This was, no, right. it was really high dollar hoarding. High like end. some of... Like really, really, really expensive stuff. I, I don't want to... Uh, yeah, yeah, I just well, don't want to say a lot of what no. was in there because I don't want to... That's you know, true. Yeah, but um, by, by the time this airs, <laughs> this will it'll be over. You They'll know, have it auctioned. But, yeah, there's there's going to be an auction of all this stuff. Or uh, yeah, um, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's crap or ten thousand dollar statues and artwork or million dollar statues and artwork. Hoarding creates chaos, and chaos is negative energy. Mm-hmm. And although there was nothing terrible about the house and I never felt anything negative. The fact that it was hoarded made it negative. It's just too much. It's too much. It's just like everywhere you look, literally every surface had something on it. Even I I filmed in one of the small bathroom off the kitchen, even above the door had stuff stuck like everywhere. And then we were shown pictures of how it sold to to this person Mm -hmm. um, before. And it was exquisite. It's exquisite in detail yeah. by itself. It doesn't need to be hoarded. Yeah. But this this becomes kind of a chronic mental thing when hoarding is a mental issue. And I don't care if you are co- collecting antiques. If it overtakes your space, it's a problem. Yeah. And we deal a lot in people call us into homes and they've been hoarded. And it's like, well, clear out 70% of this stuff and then call us back because A, we can't work safely in a Mm -hmm. hoard. And B, it can create health issues for us. Mm -hmm. And C, it's lending to the chaos of your life. Yeah. Well, and the thing is too, if you continue to buy antiques, you don't know what energy you're pulling into the house with the antiques because people, their energy and or their essence attaches to things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you have that going on as well. So you feel like the house will be better when stuff gets to Yeah, Oh, well, the house is amazing. Which I but think yeah, kind of funny because people, people are like, upset. The ghost, like, what if you no, take no, no, no. stuff? I think, I think the spirits hair. that are in that house love that place so much that I think they're very upset with they what's happened to it. It was, per- it was purposely flooded mm. by people yeah, who, distraught who, people. who distraught people who wanted a piece of the action of the house yeah. so they purposely flooded it so these exquisite plaster ceilings with beautiful artwork on or not art but just the art in the plaster the beveled corner the, yeah, yeah it has to be completely torn out and redone uh, yeah so boring. the house is uh, you can feel the energy of the building trying to heal itself it's mm-hmm. trying to like want somebody in there who will love it yes um it's going to be a um is steal financially yeah. based on this house. It's yes. a his- historic house, it, but it's also going to take a tremendous amount of money to restore now. Mm-hmm. Well, the crazy thing was, too, is in the, the stinky bedroom, the floors had beveled up. I mean, yeah. it was dangerous even walking um, because instead of the board sitting like this, they were like this. There yeah, would be a whole line. Damage. And that's like the that. second story. Yeah. There was so much flooding in this house that every floor every ceiling has to be replaced now and it's that's like how can you do this to this piece of art this history sitting here you know yeah. but uh anyway it's I, I i hope that somebody gets it and loves it and can and can 
revamp it. I don't think any of the energy that's in this home will be upset with that. No. No, they'll be happy with it. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. So cool. Sounds like it was a great night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I've asked that once the, the house gets cleared out, we can go back in, see what other energy we can find. I think the antiques are yeah. exquisite. They really were. And I can't believe they weren't ruined and all of that because I looked, I looked at the feet. That's, that, I did yeah, too. Like there the was bases. some that had some like deep damage, but not like what damage. No, not like it, the water just, just poured down into the basement. So the um, the antiques themselves are still exquisite. Yeah. And it's like, so some of those are going to be kept to stage the house, but, um, I, I hope to come back in and feel it <sighs> sigh a little bit, you know, take that big mm-hmm. breath and say, okay, maybe somebody's going to love us again. Mm-hmm. She did. She did. And I have to say the lady who owns it she does love, love it. it. Yes. Yeah. But it came well with- she also had been sick for a long time Very long so time. so you know some of that may have been yeah just not able to take it care of it and keep it up right mm-hmm. yeah but that collect that non-stop let's buy anything and everything we can and and fill every piece of wall space as, as you noted during the live stream it wasn't just antiques there was new things brought no, in. no and there's no rhyme or reason to anything that was brought yeah. in there it was like a metal sculpture of horses that is so like two thousand yeah. western with with uh, a, chase lounge. Lounge. a chase lounge from yeah. the Victorian yeah, Victorian age. It's like what what's happening yeah. here? <laughs> it was it really was cool. it was every time you turned around you saw something new. Yeah, the nineteen twenty sleek dog statue yeah. on the hearth of that one fireplace. That totally that. like the flapper. Yeah, that was cute. Yeah. I mean, it, there's so much in there that it would even be fun just to go back just to look at it again because yeah. you didn't yeah. get to look at everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, we were but it was fun. And it what's nice about our team is that we have it down to such a science. We've done this for so long that when we walk in the door, I, I, I mean, bragging rights, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to sound, but we nail it. And we nail it fast, and we don't have to be there for six hours and mm-hmm. twelve hours. Mm-hmm. We can walk in the door, kind of. De- we can determine who's here, what's going on, what their names are, and move on. Mm-hmm. And not we we want to stay. We'd stay, but you know, it's you. I think it was like three hours last night. It was really fast. Three yeah, three and, and a half. half. Yeah, because I was there about three. I got there just right around. Because we had we had a little bit of activity, and then we had that lull just before sunset, and then just a little bit more, and then it just calmed down. Like and everything went like, calm. Like we 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 told you what we wanted to now. But it's I want you guys. Uh, so, um, well, I don't know if this video is going to be up before the live stream is off, but I was watching some of our live stream today, and I didn't realize when you live stream, there's no way to download that video. I'm like, oh, so now I got to figure out how to get the video. And while we were live streaming, there's whispering going on. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah, sure. definitely. Yeah. One of the things on my post, um, she said a lot of times when those devices would go off, like especially when we were in the sunroom, the camera would go fuzzy and then mm-hmm. it would come back on. Yeah, I I, I didn't, I was just getting to look at that today and then I got distracted with something else. I had to stop the feed, mm-hmm. but yeah. Just out of focus. Yeah, she said yeah. it was like static. And why? And Andy was live streaming. Andy, mm-hmm. there was two. Your, I don't know if it was your camera or something. The, no, it was the it was Rhiannon and Andy. Yeah, yeah. So I think it was really cool, though. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I just, uh, yeah, I love it when we can get into these historic spots. So it's fun. Well, the nice thing too, like you said, not one of us felt anything with malevolence nope. nothing negative nope. it wasn't like the dishes were being thrown across the room or and, and that happens it's quite rare but it's nice to be able to go in and say just because something's haunted right doesn't mean it's bad no nope. doesn't mean something's trying to these hurt were you dead uncle freds these are people yeah. who had an yeah. attachment to the house yeah they might have worked in it or owned it but they loved the they house loved it. yeah so i mean their heart and soul is there because they want to be they're not propped mm-hmm. they want to be there even miss stanrod who came yeah. over and visited with us yep. she didn't she's not trapped 
She no, came she over. came across yeah. the street. She came across the street and we, said, hi. I think we picked her up when we were out on the Possibly. deck. And I was like, we have to go inside. We have it's to go inside. We're like, let's go sit in the sunroom. Emma? Emma? Cammie. 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 Cammie came over to us on the Yellowstone, too. Because her father was an investor of the Yellowstone Hotel. And so we kept getting her spirit there. A young girl's spirit there. And, and then... Um, Tim, I think, might have been doing, I, I don't remember, but I think Tim was going, oh, that must be so-and-so Stanrod, her, his daughter. And I just, you know, it's been a couple of years now. I forgot all about it because I don't. Your E-L this. name? Mm -hmm. Her first name's Elvira. Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. it. So and she it, kept in So e maybe she was in there earlier when I kept hearing the E-L-E-L. -E -L. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you were just the picking L. up on her big mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So she's she's making her way around town there going, hey, Pocatello Paranormal right here. Well, yeah, yeah, the actual butterfly. She is. Hey. She's like, you guys again. Yeah. 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 Cool. So, yeah. So anyway, if you're, yeah, that's what these investigations are all about. It's not all spooky, dark. It's making contact and communicating with them. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a human who's passed and they get excited to talk because they can't. Somebody can, can, Somebody can them. acknowledge yeah. them. Yeah. And a lot of times the really negative places has to do with the activity of the people who live there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I don't feel like this house has ever had anything negative in it. No, it's just no. been a loving, no, loving, very... loving, lovely house. I was so, I was kind of disappointed we didn't get activity in the dining room because when I walked into that dining room, I'm like, man, the dinner parties they have had here. Mm -hmm. You know, the wine that was flowing and the talk and the conversation, because with me, it's all about food and friends. And mm -hmm. and I, I just know that this dining room has seen some great dinner parties, but we didn't get any activity in it. And it it's just, just felt, it, it felt welcoming. And yeah. then that living room that where we sat just felt like a safe space. Mm -hmm. And those are the two spots that were just dead calm to me. Mm -hmm. The living, the, where we the sat big, with the big fireplace. Mm -hmm. Oh, the big, yeah, I never really spent much time in there. Mm -hmm. And that's actually where um, Rianne, mm -hmm. she said that that's the only place she felt safe in the home. And that's where she slept. So she, she Rhiannon is one of the contractors who's been helping renovate some of the damage from the, the flooding. And she stayed there for a few weeks. Um, it was too much. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. She said they would hear that rocking chair just boom, 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 all night long. Which was nice that I told her I could see it moving. And she's like, yeah, we hear it. And I've seen it move. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. Thank you yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That was a, yeah experience yeah, yeah she got a dollar for she, she also has a lot of gifts it sounds like her daughter has yep. a lot of gifts so yep. it's uh you know to be able to work with us and then have some of that validation of okay i'm not crazy that mm -hmm. rocking chair is rocking right yeah helps validate me too and yeah. she's like yeah <laughs> yeah yes on to the next one you've been listening to speaking of spirits powered by pocatello paranormal research in pocatello idaho thank you for joining us today we're glad you could be here if you're enjoying the podcast, please do us a favor and go to whatever platform you are listening to the podcast on and give us a review. We prefer the five-star reviews. This helps us know how we're doing, and it helps others to find the podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you on our next podcast.